hello there and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you or introduce you to the PAPSA feature of the Redis module. And uh, this is a very interesting feature. And uh, this allows you to create channels and publish messages in those channels. So what you could do with this is to let's say you have an infrastructure which is using the tier-based approach. So you have production, testing, and development servers. And um, you would like to create clients that are able to connect to this Redis instance and receive messages based on their environment. So um, let me first start up the Redis server. Now, the other thing I would like to do is to start the Redis CLI and here I'm going to monitor the transactions that are happening. So how does our publisher look like? So basically what we need to do is to import the sys and the Redis module. You could swap the sys module to rpars or whichever module you like. So basically here I am unpacking the argv and the first argument is always the name of the script. The second one will be the environment and the third one will be the action. So basically, uh, afterwards that, I'm creating my client that is connecting to my virtual machine and I'm using the publish command to publish uh, the specified command to the specific environment that I want. So what happens when I now invoke the publisher? Let's say it's the dev environment and the command is to stop the web servers. What you see here on the virtual machine is that the publish was received by the Redis instance and here is the name of the channel and here is the message that was published. So now it seems to be fine or working. What I would like to do is to create this client. So this client also has this uh, Redis module. It has the environment which says which channels to listen to. And here we have the pub sub function which says to that client that it is going to use this feature of the Redis module. And we are subscribing to the environment which is pointed out by this variable, so the dev. And what we would like to do is to first inspect this data that is received. So message data. And now if I run my client, and if I publish something, you can see that the stop the web servers uh, command was received. So if I change this to testing or test, you can see that if I restart my client and publish another message, it will not pick it up because it's not subscribed to the specific channel. So basically, let's make it dev again. And what I would like to do is to dir the message data. And I'm going to show you why it is important. So here is our subscriber. As you can see, at first it is receiving something initial. So this is just a number and uh, this can be ignored. And what we could do by this is, let's say, somehow circumvent it. So, if I say if it's not one, then it should do nothing. And perfectly fine. So now, if I publish another message to this channel, what you will see is that it should try to pick it up. Let's print this message. Mm. 
Mm. It's not so good because it's in the loop. But let's do it this way. So if we have a message that we have subscribed to, you can see that the first one is the dictionary. And uh, what we could do is to specify if the we have a message and not message data equals one, then we should print this message. Now, if I restart this one and publish another one again, you can see that I have received my command which was intended for the clients listening to the dev channel. And this command can be decoded. And it's important to decode it because otherwise you would have to work with uh, bytes and it makes it kind of harder, so to speak. So message equals message data decode and we will use the UTF-8. And now if we print our message in a nicer way, so received command, make it an F string. If we restart it again, this is what we will see. You can see we have received the stop the web servers part. And let's say you have an environment where you have DNS servers and so on and so forth. And you would like to, let's say, tokenize. And this tokeni tokenization would look something like this. So stop web servers. Now, what we can do is to say that we would like to split this message based on the double columns and we would have an action and the platform message split double column and we would also print this one so action on platform. Let's save it and just rerun the client. So now we could let's say imbue it with submodules and other external calls to other Python scripts or Bash scripts or Bash scripts or PowerShell scripts. So this varies on the actual environment where you are using it. But basically you may now get the idea. So it would be far easier to manage, let's say 100 dev servers with the help of the Redis module than let's say one by one logging in and performing the specific action because you have these clients listening and they know what to do with these specific messages when they are sent to the channel. And uh, well, technically, this is kind of all I wanted to show you. As you can see, the monitor shows all the subscribers, all the published commands to the specific channels. And um, I think it's really a, a neat feature to experiment with. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.